Hi, I'm Drew's Doctor, Eve University, and this is going to be a short video on D-Scan. Now I've just jumped into the mirror system, and you can see my uh, jump clock timer is presently spooling down. And what I'm going to want to do from here is to get myself to a safe location. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to make sure that I have bookmarks that I can get to in a safe. In this case, I'm going to go to one where I used to have a mobile depot. Warp drive active. Now this destroyer aligns pretty quickly, and boom, I'm out of out of there. Not super fast aligning destroyer, but not bad. All right, so now I'm out of safe. Now the purpose of this safe, being a deep safe, is that I am outside of D-scan range for everybody else in the system. Unless they're at an anomaly that happens to spawn nearby, it's unlikely I'm going to get seen here because everything inside scan range, uh, all the major celestials, are more than 14.3 AU away. So this is a super safe, um, safe to get to. And as you can see, I'm flying around with my tactical overlay turned on. Um, it always feels weird for me not to have it. I tend to fly it on always, but in this case, I'm going to show you how you can turn on and turn off some of the things that you can see in space and how they help you with D-Scan. So let's open the D-Scan window. So D-Scan is accessed from your sensor integration panel here. Uh, you have moon analysis, probe scanner, and D-Scan. And the bookmarks that you've bound for these, um, or key, key bindings that you've bound for these, will show up here. And the defaults are Alt-P and Alt-D. Pretty straightforward. So I can open this from here, or I can just press Alt-P or Alt-D for uh, probe scan and D-Scan. And now I'm going to open up my probe scanner as well. I tend to like to stack the two of these in the same window just because it helps keep them out of the way. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how D-Scan functions, you know, respective of what you're able to see on screen. And you may be seeing that my little solar system map over here is doing some crazy spin work here while I am, you know, looking around. And that's because under the new map, where your camera is facing in space is where you scan. Handy, huh? And right now it's showing a sphere. And yeah, I mean, it looks kind of cool that, you know, the sphere is spinning. Kind of like an old Chris Rock joke, it is spinning. Um, it will spin based on where I'm looking. And this is really effective when you start using things that aren't a sphere. So for example, in kind of like a big old eye looking around, everything in this 180 degree um, hemisphere that I am looking at, that is within scan range is gonna show up inside this hemisphere. So anything inside that 14.3 AU arc. Now, if I was within scanning range of everything else in the system, I can use a progressively narrower cone to identify with some degree of precision where objects within that cone exist. So here you can see that I'm looking down this really long cone that covers my field of vision and from where I'm sitting, I can actually pick out different items. So I can, you know, click on local objects in space, like this Serpentis hideaway. I will reorient towards it. And then if I click scan or press V, which is the default key binding for scan again, if that anomaly is within range, which it isn't, it's 26.3 um, away, I would be able to see what is presently at that site within this 15 degree arc. So in order to actually test this out, I need to be within range of scan. So I'm going to go to 100 of the sun. Warp drive. And yeah, having your, your target um, sensor overlay turned on all the time does tend to add a lot of visual noise to your experience in EVE, but they don't call this spreadsheets in space for nothing. And if just having your tactical overlay turns on bugs you, then I think you have bigger problems. So here I am at the sun. This puts me a lot more central to everything in the system, and now you can see that everything's a lot closer. That same anomaly I was looking at before is now only 12 EU away, which means it's within my D-scan range. So I reorient on it, I look straight in its direction, and I scan. 
and I can see that there's a couple of stations between here and there caught within that 15 degree so here are the the two items cut within that 15 degree arc that I was seeing. So if I want to, I can narrow it down even further and I can say I want to see everything within five degrees, which is literally just going to be this tight little cone around this, the location itself. And there's the serpent side away, nothing hiding there. So I can use my probe scanner to identify the location of the other items in space around me. If you need to center the camera on yourself, just click this little focus current position button. So from where I am now, I know up and to one side is the Serpentis Refuge. There it is. And as you can see, as I turn to face the camera at it, this cone will focus on it. But I also know that if I look straight up and over here, there we go, I have a kernite. In this kernite deposit. If I scan in that direction, nobody there. Now, I know that there'd be somebody mining there if, you know, say a venture or a procurer or something showed up, uh, or if there were wrecks there. So that could mean that even though there's nobody at the anomaly now, that they were recently there, um, at least as recently as two hours, in order to have killed something. I can also check the uh, local planets to see if anybody's in orbit, uh, as well as the local stargates and... Uh, stations and asteroid belts, anything that's basically in space around me. Now, something that helps you to, to do that and to know that these targets are there is to make sure that you have your brackets turned on so that you can see things in space. And how you control your sensor overlay and your brackets is in two places. So the first of these is to access from just above your, you know, move so that the sun's not in the way, is to access this little ring that's directly above your capacitor or around your capacitor, which is your sensor overlay. Now, if you turn it off, sure, space gets a little bit clearer. You know, there's less things to click on and less things to see, um, but it actually removes a bunch of functionality when you're trying to scout for something. However, if you're in a PVP fleet and it's not important for you to see cosmic signatures because you're not going to be scanning with a probe scanner, then you can actually turn those specific items off while leaving everything else visible, such as green anomalies um, and citadels if there are any presently in space around you. In fact, if you click on citadels in your overview, it will orient you towards them automatically. And here I can see there's one there. And Mog has just undocked a rattlesnake, and sadly for him, he hasn't renamed it. Sorry, Mog, but uh, you should always, always, always rename your ships. See, though, now that I know he's been flying a rattlesnake, and I can see his name, if I was using Pirate's Little Helper, I could look him up, or I can pull up Zed Killboard, and I can look at his name and see, is he effective in that rattlesnake? Has he killed other players? Is he leaving it named like this because he wants to be bait? Is he out hunting? Does he not care? Um, I can make certain snap judgments and assessments that say, is this a person I can take on, even though he's at a bigger class or ship than me? You know, is this somebody that I could take advantage of if I was out in, in a room with several other people? So this is where knowing how to set up your overview and knowing how to set up uh, where you're facing comes into play. Now, for the sake of just, you know, getting to safety and tethering up, I'm going to warp to the oh, Citadel while I'll explain the rest you. of this to you. So one of the things you'll see that I've done is that as soon as I've come within range of this Astrohost, the very first thing I did was navigate myself manually towards the center of the structure. Um, whether above or below it doesn't really matter, but ideally you want to make sure that you're as close to the structure as possible without bumping into it, um, because you're a lot less likely to be bumped out of the, uh, out of the docking ring range. Um, that's this circle of blue dots that flash around the, uh, around the citadel. Um, if you leave that blue dotted area, you will eventually lose tether, um, depending on how close you are to the docking ring. I think it's docking ring plus another five or ten kilometers. But if you leave that, that radius, you lose tether and you can be aggressed. 
you also lose tether if you target someone else or target the citadel itself. So in order to remain safe, make sure you get underneath the umbrella of the Astro House, either below or above, and that you're sitting close to it. It's also a good idea to put a bookmark there so that you can warp immediately to it. Now we're returning to my note about how to set up your overview settings. Having your overview set up here so that you know what you're looking at, so that you can check things like, hey, is this Jove Observatory? Is there somebody there? And yeah, I can see that between me and that Jove Observatory, there's an Algos. He may not be at that, uh, at that Jove Observatory, he may be at the Stargate for Lure, but I think it's pretty probable that he's at the Stargate and not the Jove Observatory. The other thing, too, is setting up brackets. I'm just going to stop my ship here. And I usually name my fast dock uh, bookmarks fast dock for the very reason that they'll show up easy to get to in my uh, bookmarks and system. But you can see here that I have a bookmark for this um, other safe that I've set up where I had a mobile depot. And be able to see those comes as part of having your sensor overlay turned on and off. You can turn personal bookmarks on and off if you want, but that would be the exact opposite of what you want to be doing when you're flying in space, particularly if you're navigating through NullSec and going from, you know, one system to another. Um, whenever traveling in NullSec to avoid being caught in bubbles, you should always be using tactical pins, and those pins should it be um, either above, below, off to the right, off to the left, upper left, upper right, doesn't matter, um, but some distance off of the align vector from the gate you're leaving from to the gate you're going to by about a distance of three or four hundred kilometers. So if you if you have a pin that's 350 kilometers off a gate, um, you're not going to get caught in a drag bubble because you're not on the align directly to that gate. You're not going to get sucked into it. And uh, EV University is very good about setting these up. We have a series of corporate bookmarks through most NLSEC um, covering how to get to and from so that you're not getting caught in those bubbles. Now, the other reason you want to have brackets set up is so that you can see other things in space, such as stations, planets, and so on. And how you set those up is you right click on any tab and say load presets to brackets. And in the same way that you'd load presets to tab to change the layout of the tab you're in, for example, I'm in the PVP tab, and I want to change so that my PVP travel does not show stations but only show citadels. Well, there we go. I've gone and reorganized my entire overview so that I, I'm no longer looking at stations. I'm only interested in citadels, planets, beacons, and the sun. But I may want to change my PVP travel so that I do see stations so that I can, you know, take a peek and see if maybe somebody has undocked something nice and shiny. The same goes for setting up brackets. If I set up my brackets to PVP plus Citadel, you'll notice that those planets, uh, the Customs Depots, uh, any other structures in space that aren't in this setup are now no longer visible in space. I can still see my personal and corporate bookmarks, but I'm no longer seeing those things that I don't want to have bracketed. Now, it, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you always set your brackets to all. The reason for this is that if I see somebody leave where I'm at, if they're, you know, getting the hell out of Dodge and they're leaving a fight that we're in, and I want to chase him, and I see he heads off in the dist in the direction of this planet, I'm not going to waste the time trying to de-scan down at a really tight range if he's at the customs office or the planet itself. I'm just going to pick one and warp to it at distance. Warp drive active. Having those brackets means I can just click in space and get there without having to worry about going to my overview, finding my pod saver, finding the right planet. By then, he's already bounced. He's there and he's gone again. So it's no good to have your brackets turned off. Um, and ideally, you should never have them turned off. Same goes for seeing my bookmark in space over here. There, I was able to select my fast dock just by clicking on it in space. Though I could have accessed it from here, um, and in my personal locations in the right click context menu, it's sometimes just easier to click in space and get where you need to be. And in this way, I'm able to click and dock right away. 
I hope that this covers everything that you've wanted to know about DSCAN and uh, navigating in space. If you'd like to add the Eve University overview settings to your overview, uh, as I do find them to be a very clean, uh, neat setup, color-coded with lots of options available, as you've seen displayed in this video, you can go to your ch open a chat channel. Type in overview.etacuni and click join. When you do this, you'll see that there is a long list of instructions on how to go ahead and load the overview and how to set things up so that you can access them quickly. Uh, just read through these instructions here and then click on these first three links individually in order. Uh, these settings basically cover how to reset your overview settings so that you're loading a clean set of overview settings, um, which is something that you should definitely do before changing anything in your overview, is if you're going to load a new preset, uh, start with a blank slate. So that concludes the video on DSCAN, and I hope that you have found this to be really useful. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And uh, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much.